It's a home full of history, but these walls and all the stories inside them almost came down. And aspiring actors had their chance to make it on the big screen today, and you've got the opportunity as well. But first, it's the final month before the primary. Illinois' governor candidates make their case in Quincy. This is KHQA News at 10. It's your news now. Three of the four Republican candidates in the race to be the next governor of Illinois stopped by Quincy today. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Ross Green. They attended the Adams County Lincoln Reagan luncheon and fundraiser where members of the GOP discussed their qualifications for candidacy. KHQA's Derek Frank tells us how each candidate addressed the changes they would make and the difficulties they faced. In the final stretch before the Illinois gubernatorial primary, three of the four Republican candidates attended Adams County's Lincoln Reagan luncheon at the Quincy Senior Center. The event focused on determining which of the four candidates for governor would best represent the Republican Party. Uh, we need a governor who's willing to say, like Reagan, uh, no more large government. We need to lower taxes, more efficient, more effective government, lower spending, and make Illinois' private sector work and give it opportunities. I'm the only candidate in this race that has a written plan to make us a destination economy for people that create jobs. Um, as Governor Edgar's chief of staff, I have proven that I can get a Democrat-led legislature to live within its means. Dan Rutherford has pushed for fiscal discipline and a review of state programs. Bruce Rauner did not attend. The luncheon also aimed to build support and raise funds for the Republican Party. Several other party members were in attendance, including U.S. Senate candidate Doug Truex. He says despite their disagreements, the Republican ticket can agree on one thing. Get more Republicans reelected. You know, I think that we're, we're getting to a place now where we see that these, these policies, especially with Durbin and Reed and all these guys, they're, they're a failure. They're a total failure. We've got all this unemployment, all this poverty. Nothing's working. Some believe all of the current officials have failed the state and people of Illinois. Adams County, like the rest of the state, is suffering from the fact that the state of Illinois needs to get its act together, and they've had a failure of leadership um, over the last, you know, at least particularly since this governor has been in there. With just a month remaining until the primary election, each candidate is ready to make a change. When you rate 50th in economic outlook in 2014 by two surveys, you failed. Equins had the state's credit rating become the lowest in America. Eric Frank, KHQA News, Quincy. All four candidates will face off in the primary election on March 18th. The Illinois general election will be held on November 4th. Let's send things over to the Weather Center now with a first look at your forecast. Now, Jeremy, last night you had talked about freezing rain. I'm wondering, is that still the prediction? Yeah, it looks like we're going to see some wintry weather as we go through the next several hours, Ross. Right now we are tracking uh, some weather alerts that the National Weather Service has put out that will go into effect at midnight uh, across much of the southern half of the viewing area. That freezing rain advisory a bit towards the north, the Quad Cities will be putting a uh, winter weather advisory in effect for our southeastern Iowa counties at about 3 a.m. And this goes through the day on Monday. And the main threat we are watching for will be the freezing rain and sleet and snow. And that will cause some ice accumulations and also some snow accumulations. So travel will be a bit uh, dicey as we go through the morning hours tomorrow. Uh, satellite radar right now, you can see the cloud cover is with us right now. And we are watching the moisture, which will begin pushing in from the west and the northwest here as we go through the overnight hours and uh, your Monday's first look. We're watching for the freezing rain at about 7 o'clock tomorrow. 27 for our temperature then 32 by the lunchtime. We'll see that begin to mix with some rain and snow and 35 by 5 p.m. with a lot of clearing expected late in the day tomorrow. Your full forecast is coming up in just a few minutes, Ross. All right, thanks, Jeremy. Well, almost 200 years ago, Dr. Richard Eels built a home overlooking the Mississippi River and the slave territory of Missouri. Dr. Eels established his house as both a stop on the Underground Railroad and a symbol of America's new direction towards equality. During Black History Month, it's important to recognize this home and the efforts it took to keep it standing. There it sits, a modest brick home in downtown Quincy. Nothing jumps out at first glance, but sometimes it's not about the appearance or what it costs to build. For this home, it's about what it stands for. People could come here in Quincy and, and know that there was help so they could continue on toward freedom. The Dr. Richard Eels House represents one of the most influential chapters in American history. But there was a time when this home could have vanished from the storyline altogether. 
we bought it in 1992 and it, it had been abandoned or empty for almost 30 years. It was uh, really falling in upon itself. We've come a long way now with, with putting it, restoring it back to what it was like back in the 1800s. The friends of the Dr. Richard Eels house have preserved every bit of history within these walls. That history comes to life the moment you step inside the door. Really the key thing is this was a very volatile, uh, active time in American political culture and in our history during the, the pre-Civil War era and it's just a great piece of American history. Uh, again, it's a great for Quincy, but it's a great U.S. history site. Without Dr. Eels and this home, America's narrative would be different. That's why it holds such a special significance, especially in the month of February. I think it's really important for uh, us to recognize Black History Month, and, but also not just in February. I mean, there are a lot of things that African Americans have done to contribute to what we enjoy in this country, and I think it's really important to acknowledge that in February, but year long. Fortunately, more than 180 years after it was built, this house still has a home, both in Quincy and in the history books. And if you'd like to see the Dr. Richard Eels house for yourself, it is open April through November, every Saturday from 1 to 4 p.m., and you can also arrange for private tours and special group accommodations. Obesity is an epidemic. I'm Sheila Gray. Coming up in my Family 411 report, I'll take you inside training for doctors to see how they're preparing to fight obesity bias in medicine. You're watching KHQA News at 10. It's your news now. Well, it's one of the most popular sports in the world, but it may not ping your radar when trying to guess what it is. I found out that it also has a pretty strong subculture right here at home. You might not know it, but Quincy has a table tennis club that dates back to the 1950s. It's an Olympic sport, and it's played by... Um, 
more people in the world except for one sport, and that's soccer. The club was started by Bob O'Neill, a renowned local player who now has a junior tournament bearing his name. So what does it take to be a good table tennis player? You have to have agility and you have to hit the ball. It becomes evident very quickly that everybody here has practiced a lot. Make no mistake, this isn't ping pong, it's table tennis. There's footwork, there's quickness, there's athleticism, everything any other sport would have, but the club is about more than the tournaments and matches too. It's about getting better and learning to play the sport. And when you're down here in the club and you want to play, you're usually playing people closer to your ability. And then if you want to challenge yourself to play someone who's better than you, then you can always improve your game. Whenever we're in a tournament and I, and I like, um, and I don't get a trophy, I just keep practicing and practicing, trying to, every year I'm, get, I'm keep getting better and I'm trying to win the trophy. And in these matches, there's plenty of competition to go around. Competition ultimately leading to sportsmanship. We just love to uh, see what we can do to promote the sport and give other people a chance to play at a high level. And if you'd like to learn more about the Quincy Table Tennis Club, you can visit their website. That's QuincyTableTennis.com. Well, it's not often that you get the chance to audition for a movie, but local Silver Screen Hopefuls got that opportunity today. Table 16 Productions offered walk-in auditions today at Gallery Solaro in Quincy for anyone interested in a role. They auditioned actors and actresses between the ages of 18 and 80 for a variety of roles in the film. Christopher Kelly is the film's director. He says the film will be a Hitchcock-style thriller about a photographer in Quincy. Cast some initial people that we've worked with before, but we're having open auditions now through whenever we cast all the, right, the rest of the parts, um, just kind of looking for the right people to fit the right roles. Table 16 Productions has already filmed and released two feature-length films that were shot in Quincy. If you're interested in auditioning for the film, Table 16 is willing to meet with more actors and actresses. You can send them a message via their website, table16.com. Well, we've got the chance of some freezing rain in our forecast, and that will be pushing into the area overnight. Your full forecast in two minutes. You're watching KHQA News at 10. It's your news now. More than a third of American adults are considered obese. And just a few months ago, the American Medical Association began recognizing obesity as a disease. But doctors treating these patients often can't see beyond their excess weight. And even physicians admit it's an area in healthcare which needs to change. 
Our special correspondent Sheila Gray shows us how medical school is serving as a ground zero for improving doctor patient relations. Massachusetts doctor refuses to treat patients who weigh more than 200 pounds, saying they pose an injury risk to his staff. More than a dozen South Florida OBGYN practices set weight cutoffs for the women they treat. And a growing body of research shows many doctors who do treat overweight patients have a negative view of them. The Rudd Center for Food Policy and Obesity surveyed 2,500 obese women. 69% said they've experienced bias by their doctors. The journal Obesity analyzed doctor visits and found physicians were 35% less likely to demonstrate emotional rapport with overweight patients. And academic medicine says 40% of third-year medical students have unconscious bias against overweight people. Obesity has a stigma attached to it. Dr. Trace Curry has performed more than 10,000 weight loss surgeries, many of those procedures on patients who've endured prejudice at the doctor's office. I don't think uh, that uh, overall as a whole that we're trained very well in how to properly communicate with patients. Why don't you tell me a little bit about what's going on today? We learn over time and definitely something that we learn here that is so much more than just a series of life choices. First year medical student Lisa Rickey is learning a different way. There are you know, any number of social, economic, um, family circumstances that play a role. Biases that we may have been brought up with can play out in the exam room. The medical colleges at George Washington University, Wake Forest University, and the University of Cincinnati are among several around the country raising students' awareness about their own attitudes here before they're in the exam room. If, if you've offended a patient, they're, they're either going to not come back or they're not going to follow your recommendation. Also want to be aware of any cardiovascular function. Medical educators no longer focus strictly on symptoms and science. While they know some future physicians may never fully lose their biases, the hope is that they learn techniques to keep it from affecting patient care. We can't assume an ideal world for every person, and so knowing that information and having the kind of relationship with a patient who feels comfortable sharing that with you is really you know, one of the most important things that you can do uh, in a doctor-patient relationship. It's not just medical students tackling this sensitive issue. The American Medical Association says thousands of health professionals, mostly physicians, have taken a free online course focusing on obesity bias offered by Yale University. Now, your exclusive seven storm team forecast. Well, we have mostly cloudy skies out there right now on the sleep tight sky cam looking towards uh, Broadway here in Quincy, but those clouds will be producing some wintry precipitation as we go through the next several hours and your weather headlines show that freezing rain expected to develop as we go through the overnight hours and uh, that will lead to some icing and we could also see that mixed with some snow and there could be some minor snow accumulations as well, especially to the northern half of the viewing area, but all that will be clearing out pretty rapidly as we go through the evening hours and afternoon hours tomorrow but much warmer temperatures are going to be on the uh, forecast as we go through the uh, next uh, couple days after that nearing midweek. So outside right now, these are a look at the uh, weather alerts that the National Weather Service has scheduled. They actually go into effect here for the southern half of our viewing area at about midnight. Some of the counties to the north, they go into effect at 3 o'clock in the morning and the purple, that is the freezing rain advisory and the orange is the winter weather advisory. And there's really no difference between the two. We could, I mean, at least for the forecast offices, they have issued them for the freezing rain and uh, we are talking about the freezing rain and some snowfall totals, especially as you go up towards the north. And as we uh, check out a look at the uh, current air temperatures, temperatures right now in Quincy 23 degrees, 25 on up towards the north in Keokuk and 25 out towards uh, the west in Kirksville. And these temperatures are going to be on the rise as we go through the evening hours and overnight hours as we have uh, some southerly winds pushing in and that will bring warmer temperatures at the surface, but they will still be just below freezing to support this freezing rain. Satellite radar imagery shows mostly cloudy skies right now across the entire tri-state region and we are watching the moisture off towards the north which will begin to push in and you'll see that here on our forecast in motion. We'll watch this begin to develop across the tri-states. Uh, this starts at 11 o'clock tonight so I think uh, uh, this might be putting in a head just a 
tad, a tad too early, but uh, nonetheless, we will be watching this uh, start up here sometime through the overnight hours. And we put this into motion. You can see uh, pretty much engulfs the tri states by 5 o'clock in the morning with the mixed precipitation, freezing rain, and sleet. And watch this as we go through the day. Some of this may turn over to more snow across the northern half of the area, but then we do have warm air coming in from the southwest, which will turn it over to some rain in some areas before it quickly dissipates as we go through the evening hours on Monday and we clear things out nice and sunny just in time for your Tuesday with some warmer temperatures expected. Temperature forecast, you'll see these come up to the 30s here across uh, 9 o'clock tomorrow morning, and we're in the mid 30s by uh, noon, the noon hour on Monday, and then we watch these temperatures go back down into the 20s for overnight lows uh, Monday night into Tuesday. So 23 tonight, temperatures will be rising throughout the night, freezing rain, a southeast wind at 10 to 15. Tomorrow, the morning wintry mix, I think it will mainly stay in the morning, and then as we go through the next several days after that, it will clear out on Monday through the afternoon hours and as we uh, get through Tuesday, mostly sunny skies before we see much warmer temperatures in time for uh, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. But the only caveat to that is that we will have uh, the thunderstorms beginning to develop. And I think we had knocked these temperatures down just a little bit than what we were showing last night, Ross, because I think uh, by midweek we will see a lot of the thunderstorms and uh, that will uh, reduce the uh, temperatures somewhat. So uh, some it uh, looks like we will have much more spring like weather and speaking of spring, we all know that brings with it the uh, chance of severe weather and sure. uh, now you have the chance uh, coming up in just a few uh, weeks to become a National Weather Service storm spotter and we have the website right here. This is khqa.com slash storm spotters on Tuesday, March 3rd, the St. Louis National Weather Service forecast office will be coming uh, to John Wood Community College's auditorium and during the visit you'll be able to become certified. It's completely free and you also have the chance to win a storm shelter if you're in attendance and the seven storms team me Tegan and Mike will all be there and uh, we hope you'll be able to tur turn out for that event and you can log on to khqa.com slash storm spotters for all the uh, details on that and always very popular a lot of good information to learn there I understand. yeah it's a uh, very good I mean even if you don't uh, use the information to really you know do storm spotters it's sure. just you know it's just good information to have you know just to be prepared when we do get into this uh, severe weather season all right thanks Jeremy yep. stick around after the break will Wilson joins us for sports to look ahead to playoff wrestling. That's up next. Check. Um, for some reason, I thought the eighth grade boys teams from around here played tonight. Oh, they <laughs> play tomorrow? Uh, Thursday. Oh. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh -huh.
Now, from across the Tri-State, this is KHQA Sports. While the action just keeps getting better, more close games, more upsets, more top plays, except now, at this time of the year, they mean a little more. We saw our first girls week, we saw our first week of girls sectional basketball fly by. And before we get a chance to blink, another batch begins tomorrow. But right now, we'll give our due diligence to the eighth grade boys. Let's take a look at their state championship matchups for this week if we can. Carthage, they're going to be taking on Decatur Robinson. Carthage 25 and 1 on the season. They're going to be taking them on on 7:30 on Thursday night. Let's take a look at the other one if we can. Blessed Sacrament they're going to be taking on Dixmore Rosa Parks. That game also Thursday at 7.30. Both those teams have had great season. Cannot wait to see what happens in those. And we're going to turn our attention over to the PGA Tour right now if we can. Luke Guthrie, Quincy's own. He finished up today out at the Northern Trust Open. Didn't have so great of a day, though. Was four over on the day. Shot a 75. Tied for 40th overall. Finished the tournament two under. Bubba Watson went on to win that one. He was seven under today and 15 overall. He played absolutely lights out the entire week. And if he didn't get a chance to see it, him and his young little son at the end of the tournament, that was great as he got the trophy. We'll take a look at. Well, actually, we're going to give our. We're actually going to give a little bit of love to the girls' drill teams. We got Quincy High. They won in the category of Palm today out in Springfield. Their theme was the Hunger Games, and Q and D also won first place as well. We don't know what their category was, but congratulations to both those girls. Exciting. We wanted to show them a little bit of love tonight. And if you didn't get a chance to, sh if you didn't, get, if you did not get your share of action this weekend at wrestling sectionals and regionals, another full weekend looms ahead. This time, it's the big one for the boys in Illinois: a trip to the State Farm Center in Champaign. We've got you covered for the first round matchups to see who our local wrestlers were matched up with. We've reached the pinnacle of Illinois wrestling as eight local grapplers are heading off to the state finals in search of the top spot on the podium. From the 106 weight class, Q&D's ferocious freshman Ashton Myers has done everything and then some to get to state. The former Seeds of Greatness selectee is a bold 31-3 this year and will be matched up against 30-11 Dylan Swift of Dakota in the first round. With only one loss on the season, Will Lucy may be one of the most promising wrestlers to win a state title at 113 pounds. The West Hancock product makes his competition look silly on the mat. The scary thing is he's only a sophomore, and something says we'll be seeing him in this position for the next two years, as he draws 25-16 and 16, Steve Bastian of Murfreesboro. Q&D senior Darren Stevens won't be an easy matchup for Cumberland's Brock Overbeck, let alone anyone at the 126 weight class. Stevens arrives at state 27-7 and 7 on the season. He's been a monster all year and seems to never run out of endurance on the mat. Not a bad year for West Hancock's Jack Lucy. Besides dominating all season, finishing 36-2, and, and heading to state with his little brother, Jack has also received his certificate of appointment to West Point, where he plans on continuing wrestling at the next level. Congrats on it all, Jack. We'll see you at state against Eric Estrada of Gordon Tech in the first round at 132. At 170, McCombs' Tyler Arnold is one tough young man. He's feisty out there, and he brings his A game every single time. He'll have a tough one in the preliminaries, drawing undefeated Kyle Bittorn out of McNamara. Arnold didn't get 29 wins this year by accident. He'll be more than ready for next weekend. A true hard hat and lunch pail type wrestler from Quincy Notre Dame. 195 pound Jeffrey Haley has been Mr. Consistency this season for the Raiders. Surpassing 100 wins on his career, the 31 and three senior won't be creeping up on anyone as he enters state competition. His track record speaks for itself and he'll be matched up against another good one in Lutheran's Austin Barnhart. Big bad Logan Thiele from Pittsfield has been a blast to watch wrestle this season. His rare combination of strength and technique give him an advantage over his competition. He'll have Lyles Jared Arlano to deal with in the first round. A heavyweight battle Thiele will relish every bit of. 
and a few more local wrestlers heading off to state that we could not get in there. Jared Strabi, QHS, 42 and 7 on the season. He's going to be going up against Dalton Olson, who's 40 and 4 of Glenburg, Glenburg East. Also, we have Martin Arduno from Beardstown, 35 and 9 on the season, taking on Nate Joza, undefeated out of Oriana. And Daniel Guzman, also from Beardstown, 22 and 8 on the year, taking on Keegan Gardner of Frankfurt, 36 and 5 on the season. So a lot of great matchups, a lot of interesting stuff. It's going to be exciting. Out, it's going to be exciting out there in Champaign. So we're really, really excited. And when we get back, we'll find a look at weather. We had very few stories. Yeah. Okay. Is that a huge issue or you can... Okay. What program are we cutting into right now? Ugh. Okay. Oh, I gotcha. Okay. Okay. Yeah, sorry about that. It was just a strange night. I, I was short last night and heavy tonight. I can't get anything right. And thanks for watching us here on KHQA News at 10. Be sure to join us tomorrow night for KHQA News at 5, 6, and 10. Have a great night, everybody.